Hey there everybody, Pete Pardo here from Sea of Tranquility. Welcome to another edition of Ranking the Albums. Today we're going to take a look at uh, three different bands that are in a weird way almost one band, but all three of them a precursor to an even bigger band, a band that everybody knows, a band that I love a lot. We're talking to Uriah Heep, but these three bands ultimately kind of called it a day so that most of the members could go on to, or a few of the members could go on to Uriah Heep, right when that band first started. Uh, some pretty memorable guys in these three bands. So we're talking about the gods, and that's G-O-D-S, not to confuse with the American gods, G-O-D-Z, uh, Toe Fat, and Head Machine. Two, of, Well, let's see, two of the three released two albums, and that was it. The other released one album, that was it, and then Uriah Heep happened. Okay, so how did this all start? And like I said, all these bands are intertwined together. So let's go back to 1965. You got a bunch of guys from the UK, from England, who put together a band. All right, originally in the lineup was a guitar player named Mick Taylor. Perhaps you've heard of him. Okay, Brian Glasscock, John Glasscock, perhaps you've heard of him. Ken Hensley. Perhaps you've heard of him. Joe Conus. Lee Kearslake. I think you've heard of him as well. Greg Lake. These are all guys who were like in like the early versions of the gods. Okay. Later on, though, the gods would basically be the, uh, you know, we were talking about Ken Hensley. Okay. Organ, guitars, vocals. Okay. Joe Conus, guitars and vocals. John Glasscock on bass. Of course, John Glasscock would go on to Carmen and Jethro Tull. Mick Taylor, would time would be very brief in this band because he would actually go on to John Mayall's Blues Breakers. Uh, Brian Glasscock, brother of John on drums. Okay, He would give way to Lee Kearslake on drums, later to join also Uriah Heep. Paul Newton, briefly on bass. You've Paul's been played with just about everybody, too. Greg Lake, briefly in bass, went to King Crimson, obviously, before they recorded their album. Alan Shacklock on guitars, briefly, and uh, Cliff Bennett on vocals. Okay, so what I'm going to do is we got uh, we got five albums in total. All right, that's just the gods part of it, by the way. We'll get to uh, we'll get to Toe Fat, or maybe I should just talk about Toe Fat. So basically, the gods recorded two albums, Genesis in 1968 and To Samuel the Son in 1969. And basically uh, decided to blow up that band and form another band. The other band was called Toe Fat. But kind of in between both of these, formed another band called Head Machine, which, the, you know, basically, you know, they uh, kind of did that album anonymously because, of course, there are, you know, multiple bands here. Your Rye Heap's almost going to happen soon. So Head Machine was kind of the album that was done with them using different names and what have you, uh, but also a pretty notable album. So, Toe Fat, so we got The Gods to Samuel the Sun and um, Genesis, Toe Fat and Toe Fat 2, and then Head Machine, the album is called Orgasm. So I'll talk a little bit about each one as we kind of go through this, but uh, I'm going to start off with my, so five albums. I'm going to go my least favorite to my favorite. I will say least favorite. All these albums are pretty damn good. They're all pretty special. If you love Uriah Heep, there's no reason why you wouldn't like any of these. Uh, I think there's enough kind of similarities at times. But, you know, you got you got some psychedelia here. You got certainly some prog, some heavy blues rock. Okay, there's a little bit different flavors running throughout all these, all right? Uh, so let's start off with uh, my number five is going to be uh, from 1969. To Samuel, a son by the gods. This is, like I said, their second release. Uh, this album a little bit different than their debut. I, th I think their de debut is is really, really strong. It's got good, memorable melodies. It's very, it's very rooted in the psychedelic sounds of the time, but lots of Hammond organ, uh, occasional little Mellotron here and there, occasionally some good hard rock and bluesy guitars. Other times it's more poppy uh, with little bits of folk and, like I said, heavy psychedelia. Um, a lot of good songs on here. There's a lot of tracks on here, actually. Um, but I will say this album is not quite as memorable 
Maybe not as hard rocking. Certainly not. I mean, the, the the organ work of Hensley on the first album is absolutely spectacular. There's plenty of good stuff on here as well. I just, uh, out of the five albums we're talking about here, I definitely think this one might be the least successful out of all of them, but still pretty, pretty strong here. You can, let's see if we can get a better look at the guys. You can obviously look at Hensley with that kind of fro going on there, huh? Interesting stuff. But a good album. A good album of its time period, right? So, like I said, uh, 1969. So that's coming at number five. Number four. Let me make sure I got this correct. Yep, number four is going to be Orgasm, the album by, like I said, Head Machine. So this is basically uh, most of the guys uh, from the Gods. So here you've got Ken Hensley, you got Lee Kerslake, uh, and also as well, I believe, uh, Cliff Bennett's here as well as uh, Joe. I believe Joe Conus is also on this as well. I'm trying to remember exactly who plays on these albums. Kears Lake. It's a real pain sometimes trying to... Yep, Cliff Bennett. And John Glasscock, sorry, on bass. This album is interesting because this one stylistically is pretty different from The Gods and Toe Fat, although it has a little more in common with Toe Fat. Good, crunchy guitar riffs. Some screaming leads. I mean, you got Hensley and Conus uh, just basically, you know, doing it up, unleashing some really good guitars. Uh, occasional Hammond organ, which is kind of nice. Really good vocals from Bennett on here. I did quite a bit. Hensley sings on here as well. Uh, the song, I mean, you know, the whole concept of this album. So Head Machine, Orgasm, I'll read you the titles. Climax slash You Tried to Take It All. Make the feeling last. You must come with me. The girls who loved, the girl who loved, or the girl who loved, the girl who loved. Orgasm the first time and scattering seed. So it doesn't take a rocket scientist to kind of understand that the the lyrics behind this album pretty juvenile. It's all, all relating to sex, and you know, you, you listen along, you're kind of like uh, you kind of roll your eyes a little bit. However, uh, the vocals are fantastic, and this album kicks ass. Like I said, you got some great. Great songs on here. Make the Feeling Last is Kick-Ass. Title track, Orgasm. Long, kind of proggy. Lots of Hammond organ. Uh, the First Time in Scattering Seeds. Pretty heavy rocking. Uh, you Tried to Take It All. Also quite rocking. Blistering Leads. Pretty rocking album. Really good. I dig it a lot. Like I said, the, probably for me, the worst thing about it is it's just real juvenile songs. Uh, you know, as far from a lyrical perspective and the titles and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, whatever. So... Coming in at number three, we're going to go to Toe Fat. Now, this Toe Fat's debut from 1970, self-titled debut, has one of the most bizarre hypnosis album covers you're ever going to see. So there you got some naked folks on the beach, man and a woman, a couple of there's a woman back there. So instead of having uh, their normal heads, what you got is toes as heads. That's exactly what that is. Very bizarre. Uh, a good album, though. This is more of kind of like, you know, the Toe Fat albums are more kind of like blues rock, not real psychedelic at all. So, you know, think like maybe kind of like Humble Pie, Cactus, that sort of thing. Maybe some of the heavier blues rock stuff of like, you know, Fleetwood Mac, 10 years after, uh, Chicken Shack, that sort of thing, you know. You got uh, Hensley on mostly guitar, but a little bit of organ and piano, some vocals. You got Cliff Bennett, like I said, lead vocals, a little bit of piano, John Conus. Uh, bass and vocals, Lee Kerslake on drums and vocals, and a guy named Mox was his, uh, what was his full name? Oh, I forget Mox's full name. Anyway, that's what they call him, but he plays uh, flute and a little bit of harmonica. Some good songs on here. Uh, Bad Side of the Moon, kind of a interesting hard rock and take of the Elton John early classic. Uh, you got uh, But I'm Wrong, which is good, You Like Me, Just All the Rest, Working uh, Nights, You Tried to Take It All. That's my love for you. Solid, solid blues rock record. Okay. So that's coming in at number three. Number two, I'm going to go with Toe Fat's second album. So this is basically the same lineup, except by this point in time, uh, Hensley has already flown the coop. And I believe, hold on, I'll tell you exactly who's on this particular album. Uh, I believe, you know, Glasscock is still here. Um, I believe Hensley is also still on this album. Uh, Alan Kendall, I believe, might be on this as well. Let's see if I can get the... Uh, yeah, I believe Alan Kendall is here. Uh, let's see. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Got some of these, all of these reissues just are really... Yeah, so can't, yeah. So basically the same li uh, lineup, but Alan Kendall came in to replace Hensley on guitars and uh, a little bit of vocals. But still... 
pretty dynamite album. I like this album better than the first, and I'll tell you why. Uh, even without the presence of Ken Hensley, I think this album rocks a hell of a lot harder. This album has got some smoking, heavy blues rock riffs. This is actually a pretty, pretty rocking album. Vocals are very strong. Uh, you got, you know, Idol, Kicks Ass, uh, Three Time Loser, A New a new Way, Since You've Been Gone, excellent, Midnight Sun, excellent, uh, Stick Heat, just good, heavy, heavy riffing. Think like Cactus at their heaviest, okay? A little bit of Mountain, all right? Very bluesy, but very crunchy. Wicked sizzling solos, guitar solos, thunderous rhythms, r a really strong album, you know, Obviously, the uh, <laughs> cover is just god-awful, but uh, I dig this album. Like I said, I, I like the first album, but I think this one's a lot more fun for me. It's just it's a lot more rocking, too. So there you go. So that's number four. So number f uh, no, number two, sorry. Number two, I keep forgetting we're going, going in opposite order. So coming in at number one, this is a pretty terrific album. So this is uh, Genesis by the Gods, Okay. Like I said, very psychedelic album, but very proggy as well. Loads of Hammond organ from Hensley on here. Really strong vocals, tasty guitars. You know, obviously by this time, you know, Greg Lake and McTaylor are gone from the band, but this is basically the core of the gods here. Uh, just some really good stuff. You're My Love. Sorry, You're My Life. Really, really good. Looking Glass. Uh, what else? Towards the Skies. The kickoff track is really good. Time and Eternity. Plastic Horizon, really good song, really progressive track, but they've got, love the uh, radio, radio show is also fun, misleading colors, like I said, good mix of like late 60s psych, as well as the oncoming proto-prog movement, but a lot of good hard rock riffs on here too, really excellent vocals um, from, from the guys, and loads, loads of Hammond organ, so considering like how quickly, like all this, you're talking, all this happened in the span of just, uh, like two years, right? Three at the tops, you know, from the first God's album, Genesis, through to basically uh, the Toe Fat stuff and Head Machine. So you're talking 68, 69, and most of 1970. By, you know, by the end of 1970, your eye heap is already happening, okay? And Hensley is, is already there, and then, you know, you got Kierslake follows him not too long after, all right? But, um, some good albums here. So I'm going to go, my number one's going to be Genesis from the Gods. Number two, Toe Fat 2. Number three, Toe Fat self-titled. Number four, Orgasm from Head Machine. And number five, To Samuel A. Son from the Gods. All good albums. I would recommend all of them. Uh, like I said, not a stinker in the bunch. Uh, they're all a little varied, a little bit different, but that's good. But you can hear all the seeds that are sown on these albums of the stuff you would hear coming up in your rye heap. So you got you got psychedelia, prog, hard rock, blues rock. It's all here. And like I said, if you're a heap fan, this is kind of like part of the whole story. Okay, part of the whole story. So there you have it. The Gods, Toe Fat, and Head Machine. So some of you are probably scratching your heads like, God, I haven't heard any of these bands Pardo's pulling these strange obscurities out of his ass. What is going on, right? But all part of rock history. And if, like I said, if you're a Uriah Heap fan, that's what's kind of cool about loving bands like uh, Sabbath and Uriah Heap and Deep Purple. And, uh, you know, because you got all these other bands, all these like obscure bands that either came before or came after. The family tree of these bands is enormous for the most part. So uh, so it's, it's kind of cool, like looking at and talking about these bands. So there you have it. That's, so your assignment for today is to go here on YouTube or wherever you go listen to your stuff and listen to any of these albums, see what you think, come back and report. Did you like The Gods? Did you like Toe Fat? Did you like Head Machine? Uh, and I know some of you are going to be like, this is great, I'm going to go out and buy these. So I'm kind of helping the sales there. So this is on the web at www.seeatranquility.org. We're on Facebook, we're on Twitter, of course, we're here on YouTube all the damn time as the spam calls come in. We'll see you guys tomorrow morning with more Deep Cut Dive, Deep Purple tomorrow morning, coming at you with Jack Toledano. See you later.